Hello, Internet friends. I'm going to try to run through the Claire Woodwinds that I just got. Uh, the whole bundle, 8DO Claire Woodwinds. We're going to do it alphabetically. They all have the same sections. This is the alto flute. Um, the only thing I've done so far since loading it is add the deca and wide mics. They have uh, volume controls here. So you can... Oops. I'm actually going to set it back to where it was. So I'm starting with legato lyrical. I'm going to focus on legatos. We've all heard arcs from 8DO. If you haven't, they're nice. Um, so I'm going to focus on the legato idea. What I like about these instruments is they feel human. They feel soloistic. So they, they don't feel like they're a first chair all the time. They kind of feel like they're really trying to play a solo line that is exposed and as a soloist. These natural ones um, have very... Um, they're, they're, their sustains are short. I lied. Their sustains are the length of a breath without straining too much. And so when you play um, a couple notes together, it t I'm holding them down still, and, they're, and it ended. So they're not looped to just kind of play forever. They just sort of end before you let go of the key. If you don't like that, you can choose any of these others, I think. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, here's the mod wheel. You can watch that. You can watch um, what keys I'm pressing. I'm not putting any effects on this outside of what's in the mic positions for now. I will play with that later, probably when we get to a couple of the other instruments. So. That's about how much range I get. Let me hit the key pretty hard. Um, that's about how much range I get with about 127 velocity at that note. And I'm not playing with legato volume, legato speed, or even expression yet. I'm just basically playing with the dynamics here. Um, we'll go to the low end of the range. So with this natural, what happens, um, you might notice, you might have noticed right there, and this happens with all the instruments, I think, um, that I've played with so far. This is pretty new to me, so I'm still working through it. The note might try to end, and then when you play the next one, it tries to sort of start that note back up again. Here it kind of start the note back up again. So that obviously seems like an intentional part of the scripting because it doesn't sound super unnatural, it doesn't sound like a mistake, but it's something to be aware of with this natural articulation. I don't think I get that. Let's skip to medium. I don't think I get that with the medium because I think they're looped. Nope. Same. Shoot, I have to wait a little longer. So it kind of picks it up, and that's not a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of. So, um, I mean, you, know, you can f consider it a feature if um, you um, like it, and you can kind of just think of it as a quirk if you don't, but I, 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 I don't mind it. It's just something to be aware of because they do have... I think some of these, this might be the infinite, infinite loop one. Nope, it... <laughs> Sorry, this is the bug in contact. It makes it look like they've played all these keys. Let's see. Makes it look like I'm holding them down, I mean. Let's see if it does it here. Shoot, I have to wait a little longer.
Yeah, it's still doing it there, but you get a little bit of a more sustained thing to be able to... It looks like it's got at least one cross-faded loop to give you a little bit more time to continue the phrase. A little delay here. Um... So these are, um, uh, let's see, uh, we are out of, the only thing that I've noticed in all the instruments, I'm just checking the screen. I don't think there's a way to change the length of these staccatissimos. This stockmo, I assume, means staccatissimo. So... There's no um, kind of time machine stretching mod wheel. They're really nice, I think. Um, but you cannot change the length of them, which would have been nice. It's not a problem. It's just an omission. Actually, what does this release to do? Oh, yeah, I have to learn about what that does. Something... Is it like the second chair? I don't know what these... I, I have to read about what these twos are. I haven't played with them too much. So then marcados seem to have kind of a weird unnatural release if you don't um, let them go um, together. Uh, hmm, what am I trying to say? So you have to kind of let them play out and figure out how you're going to release them. I haven't quite figured out how the release is supposed to, because it just it doesn't sound like they let go of the of the note naturally. But a little reverb can help that. So um, I threw these in here so that we could put um, a real room. Concert Hall A, take down the wet. And suddenly it sounds like it's in a room. So when you let go of the note, it suddenly sounds fine. So you can, um, you know, a little reverb takes care of that release. Um, so there's a bunch of variations. They're all quite similar. Now you can hear a little bit of maybe you're wondering if I'm doing something weird or if the instrument is doing something weird with the volume almost. So if I play a fast passage with this soft articulation like that, I'm not waiting for the notes to develop. They get a little louder as they go. So if you play a slow passage, it sounds better, but if I try to go... It starts to be a little bit strained, so you can either add a compressor or you can um, just choose a different articulation because if you're trying to go faster, those soft ones just take longer to evolve. They evolve nicely. But if you try to play faster, it starts feeling a little more strained. I think they're the ones you'd want to choose uh, when you're trying to let a note evolve a bit. And then this is where it starts to shine is 
you'd want to pick the strong transition when you want to get just a little bit more power behind there. So it, it actually is, it's nice to have all of the different choices. And that's all in lyrical. And there is also a strong... Um, I took the reverb off. No. Oh, I took the halls off. That's what I did. Um, meaning the Decca and the wide mics. See, it's trying to pick up that note. So it just sounds a little weird to have that pick up. Okay, so same idea here um, with the strong. Um, I'm not going to go through too much of this other stuff. There's some runs um, and some arcs, but we've got a lot of instruments to cover. Mm, looks like they didn't unpack correctly. Uh, we'll just move on. It's funny because I thought I played with those last night. Um, okay, so moving on. We're going to move on to lyrical bassoon. So pretty big jump in instruments. Um, I'm going to turn this up just a touch here and add the mics at their default. Let's go to strong. So they develop. Maybe that's what this release one is. big development there. I'm not really playing with the mod wheel or anything here. I'm just sort of playing with the uh, Transitions, listening for. I mean, it definitely feels like it's for lyrical passages. Let's move on to um, the strong. Oh, it went the opposite direction as my uh, finder. Hello, it's asking me to confirm that I want to. choices make a difference. So the transitions are, um, you'd have to work with them. Maybe the legato speed. And yeah, they have a little pumping effect if you've if you've not got the right speed for your transition so you'd have to probably work with this a bit um but nice tone nice development lots of choices
I mean, they really sampled the heck out of this. Um, the other thing I like um, in all the instruments that I found is that when you um, take legato off and you start playing in polyphony, the marcados are all the same length. Pretty much. They feel like they've been playing together. Now that may not be right for your piece, but what it means to me is that they're really attentive to what they were sampling, how they performed it, how long everything um, took, and it and it kind of just speaks to the level of detail that they that, that they were going for in the collection. So that that actually um, was just a nice. Um, uh, a nice thing that I that I learned that I wanted to point out. Now I had the two on there, which is um, it feels like it's kind of the second chair almost. The way I'm hearing it, it's like it just kind of slightly alternative. I don't know if it's different playing performer instrument mic. I'm not sure what the two is position. It just sounds it sounds tonally timbrely a little differently. So let's listen to the staccatos because we're in bassoon. Um, again, you would have liked to hear the um, the length of the shorts be adjustable. I'd like to be able to make one of these longer than the other, so I would have to do that in my DAW. The, the, the nice lack of shotgun effect is good. Anyway, um, you know, I'd like a couple of these to be longer, but whatever, you know. You get what you get. Oh yeah, there's a couple honky ones, but it's the bassoon. It's an interesting instrument. they're pretty consistent and even and accurate representation of the instrument. So there you have it for the staccatissimos on the bassoon. Um, so they all have these general arts. Let's um, change instruments here. Uh, general arts for what's next alphabetically is the clarinet. The clair clarinet. It's going to ask me to confirm it. Um, so this is what the general arts interfaces look like. I'm going to add these mics. Staccatissimo again. Now, I'm wearing headphones and I can hear clearly that this note is coming out of one channel more strongly and this is coming out of the other channel more strongly. So, right away you can hear the positioning in the stage, the virtual stage, doesn't sound right. So that's too bad, but it's correctable. Um, whoa. They really move over to the other side of the your head, my headphones. It's like they move to the player. But, you know. So that's not perfect. Um, let's see what two sounds like. Yeah, some of these are jumping out of one side of my headphones. <clears throat> Marcados again. Pretty 
Oh God, I was on two. So Marcado, often Marcados can do fairly quick runs without, you know, if you're in a pinch or if you, some of these are going to sound wackier than others. Uh, let's do something more. Probably wouldn't use a Marcado for that. No legato choices here. So let's switch to the legato since that's... Oh, so there's a legato fast and a legato slow. I haven't played with the clarinet here much. Oh, it's asking me to confirm it. I have to turn that off. Legato fast, so... So I can hear some keys, which I like to hear, personally. I like to hear a little key. There's also an effects. In the runs and effects, I think they give you some key depression sound effects. Let's play a nice little... So those are all the natural ones. Then we move on to the mediums. So these are all recorded. If you if you did this, there's one you don't like, just switch them around. You could probably pick one for the run and one for how you want to land the run, like heavy vibrato you might want to land on. here so I don't breathe on you while I'm playing. Um, so again, popping out of one ear. It's popping out of the right side for me. And then as we move up, it moves over to the left side on some of these notes. I don't quite know why it's popping out of certain sides. So you'd want to correct that. Um, positioning in the stage. Um, vibrato. I mean, this is what I like about this collection, though, is that you get these nice... In the bundle here, they weren't very expensive, and it was nice to pay this little for that kind of vibrato, because I don't get that from some other... ...packages that I have. Um, okay. Let's check out Legato Slow. I'm going to skip to vibrato. Mm -hmm. 
Now, for me, those quiet notes are too quiet. Um, and I would put a compressor on there to just run over it. Um, so, and that's just me. You can find different ways around this, but I would put like just simple soft compression on there. Add a little reverb. Um, Compressors on there it got a little quieter. We'll turn that up. We'll add um, this room back in. They didn't sample that transition. <laughs> and you know you've got a nice nice clarinet nice nice alternative to some of the things that you might have in other look at other collections so let's move on to english horn um might be a good time to look at the arcs. I'm going to leave that compression on for now. Let's put the other mics in. So, um, piano, mezzo piano, piano. Okay, the top note definitely lasted longer than the bottom note. So, um, those are the arcs. I mean, they're arcs. We can also look at runs. Let's look at the runs here. Minor runs, and they, they go, I think this part of the screen is going to be up, and this part of the screen is keyboard is going to be down. If you don't like my reverb, I will turn it off for you. If you don't like my compressor, I will turn it off for you. I'll even take these off. I don't know why it's crackling. I hear crackling. But I think that's my sound situation. Sound card or whatever. Major. So there's breaths. Let me play these with. Wow, that's creepy. <laughs> Can use it in a horror soundtrack. Valve clicks. So, also kind of sounds like a horror soundtrack in my headphones. Uh, legato. So let's go to lyrical legato. All of these are at probably 127 velocity. I'm using a keyboard that has very little uh, velocity sensitivity. There's another pop out of my right channel of my headphone. So we're in E. 
I mean an instrument that has E as the lowest note. So interesting. Decent crossfades. Um, and that's the close mic with no effects. and I'm missing keys. <sighs> Breathe. Okay, Marcados. Um, you get the idea. So there's also a legato strong. Let's move on. Um, I, I like it. You know, I mean, I think this is a good collection. I'm glad that I got them. Flute. Um, we'll go straight to Legato Lyrical, since that's the thing that most of us might be missing from other collections. I'll turn this convolution reverb off. And we'll add the mics, just to give it a little bit of space. So what I like about this flute is that it's got a little bit more of a fuller bodied tone. And it, what's interesting about it from a color perspective is that it sounds a little reedy to me. If you don't play it like a flute, or if you don't hear it like a... Let's see. It starts to sound a little bit more like one of those um, singular double reeds, the oboes and the English horns or something. Obviously you can hear the flute popping out, but... It's got just a touch of that almost nasal quality that um, kind of makes it an interesting... I lost my screen. Weird. Let's see what that two looks like. Still haven't figured out exactly what they're doing with that two. I got that a little bit where sometimes notes kind of drop out if you um, so some of the articulations have a slow attack I think that's where the legato speed comes into play okay 
So that actually does sound like a little bit longer. You can hear different dynamic levels pretty easily. If I turn legato on, oh, I can't turn legato on. Uh, so you get the idea: strong, general, runs, arcs. Um, but you can see that everything's fairly been fairly consistent so far. So when we move to those others, uh, they sound pretty consistent. Here is an oboe. I'm going to skip to medium, no, to sus crossfade. Get a little reverb going. since I'm messing with it. I'm not trying to play a great phrase here, I'm just trying to listen for transitions. Let's do strong one for a second. Okay. Um, I think the compressor helps a bit. Um, the reverb obviously helps. The compressor was maybe too much, but um, you get the idea. And that's lyrical. Let's see what strong sounds like. It's a nice instrument. It's not as, um, these aren't as um, wallflowery as some of the sample collections that are out there. So some of them are meant to blend and just be kind of first chairs, and these are a little bit more soloisty sounding. They sound more like a exposed part, like I said at the beginning. Um... 
So that's why I like them. If we contrast this, I have an, do I have an oboe in, um, um, wood, wind, solo, oboe, legato. Should we do expression or legato? Let's, let's even pick expression. And um, so <clears throat> when you turn the vibrato all the way up, the articulation, yeah, that's not what I meant. I have to pick legato. The articulation is true legato. Turn the vibrato all the way up. And the vibrato doesn't seem to do much. It's very subtle. Still sounds like an oboe, but it's also not as warm. The whole tone, I just don't want to feature it. And slow down the response. But it's very, um, clinical. It's very well done, but it's very kind of robotic, relatively. It's responsive. The transitions are nice, but the tone isn't quite there. It doesn't quite sound as um, just expressive and as... just doesn't sound and and lyrical might be the, a good word for it because this just sounds more lyrical of it goes. Um, moving on. So that was oboe, and then we get to move on to piccolo. So let's skip legato lyrical and see. I, I've been picking legato lyrical the first time every time. Let's pick um, legato strong. So legato strong, piccolo. I don't think I've played with this one yet. So mod wheels at the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, I haven't been playing with expression because I don't have that controller set up next to my mod wheel, but... You're gonna probably get some good results when you play with expression, and if you have a wind controller... You'll already know that you can get a lot more out of these instruments. I like the breath sound. The clicks you're hearing are just from me clicking buttons, the snaps. Low range sounds really cool with that a lot of breath. Do I still have uh, compression on here? No. So that's Lyrical Strong. Um, Staccatissimo. <laughs> Everybody's favorite sound. I think there's some uh, effects that do, um, what are these effects? I think there might have been an overblown, or was it with the pitch bend? What was I playing with that had the pitch bend overblown sound? So let me play these down here. Try to just hold my breath. Can't hear it. Sounds like I'm eating potato chips. Okay. Juga juga juga. Piccolo flute legato. This is the lyrical one. Lost a little bit there when we went fast with the diminished drone. Let's see, medium. I'm kind of getting lost notes in there. It might be my fault. I mean, I kind of like those, though. They're better than other things that I've got. Um, so an example would be... 
Um, let me grab it here. Hollywood is another uh, package that I've got with some woodwinds in it. And um, piccolo, flute, legato, um, slur, accent, maybe, or even runs. Let's try this one. So these, this is uh, piccolo, flute, legato, slur, runs. I'm going to need to mute this contact instrument. Again, it kind of sounds like a good section lead. Good first chair, but if I'm looking for a soloist, I need to end on something with a vibrato. None of these look like they're going to end on vibrato. What is VS again? Velocity sensitive legato script. So, uh, longs, legato repetition, no vibrato to vibrato full. Okay, let's try that one. I mean, that's, wait, that's the vibrato. Let's do monophonic true legato, I think, is what you'd want to press. Maybe not. Maybe we want. No, that sounds like ass. Oh, and then. So you immediately get into this, like, yeah, just not doing it for me kind of feeling. You know, and then you, you, you go back to... And you can add some more reverb if you need the sound of that hall. Oops, I had it up. And you can play with it, but it, I mean, it just sounds gorgeous. I don't need that much hall. I mean, it just sounds more like a natural, wonderful, beautiful instrument uh, to me. So. He can put them together, too. You can just give Hollywood a little bit of boost. Oh. Then they sound like a little further away. And somebody's bending pitches differently than the other. Never mind. Uh, so that's the collection. Um, ATO, Claire. It looks like this. It's um, alto, bassoon, clarinet, English horn, flute, oboe, piccolo. 
and um, I think it's pretty good. I'm glad I got it. Took a lot of time before I decided to get it, but it, it, it's especially good if you're looking for singled out solo players to really play like their soloists. Um, if you're just looking for a section leader or something that's going to blend really well with the orchestra and something that is going to be your first chair, essentially. Um, you know, you may not want this. I don't know. You, it might still work great for that, but um, it's not as plain and as steady as some of the other things out there. I did listen to um, VSL demos. They're old. They're Some of them are from 2007, but they're um, pretty... Um, there's a lot of control. They're really well done. The, they're a little, they're a lot more expensive, I think. Um, if you get all the articulations, you get more articulations than you're getting here. You get portados and a number of transitions and a number of controls. If you get the basic packages, you get about what you get here, maybe. Um, but, uh, your, um, and you can upgrade too, so you can pay fifty dollars per instrument at standard price, and or a hundred euros, fifty euros, hundred euros, for all the extra articulations. But you can upgrade at any time for the difference. So that's VSL, and then um, uh, Berlin has some soloists in expansion packs. It might be B and C, and they're gorgeous. Uh, they also don't. They might not have quite the vibrato that we hear here in the Claire's. Um, they might not get quite so um, folky, I guess. But ATO has, it sounds really human. Um, I think Colin O'Malley did these, and if you um, infer from his name that he's Irish and that you kind of get the feeling of an Irish countryside from some of these performances, um, you know, I think it helps picture that it, it's not a it's not necessarily a strictly concert setting. Some of these kind of feel like they could be more in more um, maybe whimsical isn't the right word, but um, tr not traditional concert settings. But these feel like they could work in TV cues that are um, just featuring a woodwind instrument and not so much a, a, a concert um, baroque or classical kind of setting. And the VSL sounds very um, suitable for concert works, possibly avant-garde works, I guess. Um, and the um, the Berlin also is very expressive in that the Teldex Hall is just gorgeous sounding. Um, Spitfire, I haven't spent much time with. Um, and, um, you know, there's Cine, Cine Winds, Cine Samples has, has some wins, I think cinematic strings and cinematic um, the CSS series cinematic studio strings is going to be coming out with a cinematic woodwind collection um, maybe by the end of 2019 uh, so you know there's a lot of options out there but I think these have a nice position um, in your collection these Claire woodwinds and um, you know if they go on sale for the the whole package goes on sale again sometime you might want to check them out all right take care